Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing the It Girl fragrances for summer 2023. This list is for those of you looking to have a hot girl summer. They definitely give off main character energy. They're showstoppers, head turners, some of the best fragrances in my entire collection because they are so much fun to wear. I truly enjoy wearing them. I look forward to spraying these fragrances. Yes, they are going to draw compliments from other people, but more importantly, they give me that boost of confidence. I think I smell good, so I don't really need validation from anyone else to feel like the best smelling person in the room. Starting hot with one of my all-time favorite fragrance discoveries, this is Hedonist from Victoria Mania. Just look at this bottle. You know it's going to be glamorous. You know it's going to smell luxurious. And actually, the puddle doesn't even do the fragrance justice. It is that good. It was a chance discovery, and it will come as no surprise if you watched my LA fragrance haul because I was immediately taken by this fragrance. Love at first sniff. I purchased this from the scent bar. I found it among the cult classic feminine fragrances. It was up there with all of the top sellers. Keynotes include rum, bergamot, peach, osmanthus absolute, jasmine absolute, orange flower absolute, tobacco, vanilla, cedarwood, and vetiver. There's a warmth to this fragrance that I think makes it perfect for summertime. It's almost like a sunset or a summer date night. It smells a little bit like honey and it is so bold and strong and feminine and it smells so very rich, wealthy, heir to the estate. We're talking generational wealth, but not quiet luxury. There's nothing quiet about this fragrance. It is bold. It is decadent, unapologetic. It is so in your face. It's a little bit sweet, but not cloying. But there's an edible quality to it, which I really love. It's mouthwatering, addicting. When I smelled this fragrance, my initial reaction was like, whoa. But then I had to keep smelling it, keep smelling it, keep smelling it, because there's something about it. This releases serotonin in my brain. I cannot stop smelling this fragrance whenever I wear it. When I smell hedonist, I just imagine getting really dressed up. This could be a gala, a black tie, a wedding, a special event where you just want to look and smell your very best, but definitely date night appropriate. This is so bold that it could be a nightclub fragrance, a girl's night, a, a sexy first date, anytime, any place you want to turn heads, center of attention. I know I'm building it up quite a bit. This is just my style of fragrance. It definitely speaks to me. It's not going to be for everyone. If you've tried this fragrance and you didn't love it or maybe it just didn't connect with you, I have two other fragrances from Victoria Mina that you might really love instead of this one. So after my initial review when I was raving about my new discovery, The Hedonist, the brand reached out on Instagram and they offered to send me a little discovery set and I tried all of the fragrances and then they sent me my two favorites and these are incredible. I kept them in the box although this isn't a true first impression. Of course I have smelled them and when I tell you every single vial, every single little sample smelled so good, it was nearly impossible to narrow down favorites. And I think Victoria might know me better than I know myself because this was the fragrance she recommended to me, Hedonist Iris Absolute. And when I tell you, I smelled this fragrance and I knew I liked it, but when I wore this on my skin, I truly fell in love and I have become obsessed with this fragrance on the same level, if not a little bit more so than the original Hedonist, and I truly did not think that was even possible. Keynotes include iris, leather, cocoa beans, vanilla, amber, and woods. As much as I love the bottles with the little jewels, the little gemstones inside, I also really love the black and gold from the Absolute line. It's very powerful. It definitely makes a statement. This is a fragrance that smells incredible on a blotter, but it smells even better on the skin it's warm, it's addicting, could lean fall winter, but I actually think it's just so warm and cozy. It smells like a hug. I want to wear this year round. The cocoa bean vanilla amber combination is so incredible. It's very smooth. It's a very sophisticated, elegant fragrance. Very bold and powerful and incredibly feminine. Not quite as flirtatious as hedonist and it's not quite as sweet. There's a hint of powdery floral almond, which I also really love. I wore this fragrance yesterday and I could not stop smelling myself. And because it's the absolute fragrance, it's a little bit stronger, it's a little bit bolder. So there is a hedonist iris, but this is hedonist iris absolute. So it's a little bit more intense 
And wow, the projection is insane on this fragrance. I like that it has the warm ambery quality, but it's not super heavy. It's not too bold that I couldn't wear this right now. This will absolutely be a summer date night fragrance in Miami. Hands down, another one of my favorite fragrance discoveries of 2023. I think this is a no-brainer. I would even say it's a safe blind buy, which is really saying something for an incredibly bold fragrance. But if you like the sound of these notes and you like something that's a very sophisticated and you want that wow factor, this is like 12 out of 10, 100 out of 10 off the charts. And then if you've been around for a while and you're familiar with my fragrance tastes, you know that I love rose. It's one of my favorite notes in fragrance. And there is a hedonist rose. It comes in a pink bottle that looks like the original hedonist and it's incredible. It smells a lot like rose and it would have been an easy choice to make because it's beautiful. But then I smelled Rose Absolute, and what can I say? This just takes it to the next level. The Absolute fragrances, and there's a Hedonist Absolute as well, so intense. I think the original Hedonist is the only one of the bunch that I actually preferred the original. I think the Absolute was maybe a little bit too intense, or I don't know, it was a little bit too different for me. So I like the original Hedonist, but then Rose Absolute, Iris Absolute. Keynotes include Turkish Rose, Oud, Amber, and Sandalwood. Of the three, I would say this is the moodiest fragrance. It is definitely dark, seductive, date night, very bold and intense, probably from the Oud. If you are an Oud Rose lover, you have got to try this fragrance because I would think that's a pretty common combination. I don't think I've ever appreciated it or loved it as much until now because Hedonist Rose Absolute did it better than anybody else. The woman who wears this fragrance is plotting revenge and you do not want to get in her way because she is up to no good and she cannot be stopped. It's little black dress, sharp winged eyeliner, the tallest stiletto heels you've ever seen bold red lip. This next fragrance is really luscious and tropical, perfect for summer, and if you like this style of fragrance, stay tuned because I'm planning to do a roundup of all of my favorite tropical fragrances in a later video. This is a relatively new addition to my collection, and it was sent to me complimentary from Twisted Lily. It had been on my wish list for a really long time. I'm sure you've heard of it. This is from Zerjoff. It's the Shooting Stars Collection, Cruise Del Sur 2. The keynotes include mango, pineapple, apple blossom, floral bouquet, green leaves, vetiver, cedarwood, and musk. As soon as I read mango and pineapple, I was immediately intrigued because I love those juicy, tropical, fruity style fragrances. I live in Miami. It's endless summer here, so it's just kind of perfect for the climate. I find myself grabbing this style of fragrance and it is even better than I could have expected. Now, the first time, the first few times I wore this, I found it to be a little bit light or sit a little bit closer to the skin. It might've been because my nose was still a little bit stuffed. Now I'm basically 99% better. It's juicy. It's a little bit fruity, a little floral, a little musk. It's a little bit of everything. This just feels like a day out on somebody's yacht. <laughs> The fanciest tropical island vacation, maybe Hawaii, Maui, kind of brings me back to my honeymoon. It's juicy, fruity, and tropical, but it does not smell like a typical designer fragrance. It doesn't smell like the type of fragrance that you could find in any department store. It has that unique wow quality. If you like pineapple, if you love mango, if you want to be transported to the islands, highly recommend trying this fragrance. There's a hint of creaminess in the dry down, a little musk, just enough sandalwood. It's perfectly balanced and beautiful. And it's the type of fruity fragrance that you're not going to get sick of. I have another new favorite from Zerjoff. This is a Bouquet Ideal Eau de Parfum. This is another warm and cozy hug. I would put this in the same category as Hedonist Iris Absolute. They don't smell the same, but similar occasion, similar feel. They definitely carry the same mood. It's described as full of life, full of romance, the picture of a dreamy breeze from the Mediterranean Sea where the smell of flowers floats and the rocky seashores are smothered by warm sunshine. I've always heard so much about this fragrance. It's another one of the best sellers, but I think the name is a little bit deceiving because I've always read Bouquet Ideal and just assumed this would be a really floral, springtime, like fresh garden type of fragrance. 
and it's definitely not. It's more on the powdery side, kind of a warm powdery amber. Usually when I think of cashmere and cinnamon, I think of more of a warm, cozy, full winter type of fragrance, but this is truly year round. I mean, it's not super heavy or super moody. It's a little bit light and fluffy. It's the perfect summer gourmand. It has a really beautiful creaminess from the vanilla. It's so smooth. Elegant, sophisticated. Again, I think of a really special vacation somewhere incredible. The Amalfi Coast, if anybody's traveling to Europe this summer, this would be an incredible fragrance to wear. And just a hint of cinnamon. It's not too spicy. It's so nice. It's charming, addicting, a little bit sensual, but I still think this would be more of a daytime fragrance, but it's a wow, like head turner type of fragrance. I smell this perfume and it just makes me feel beautiful, in love. It has a touch of whimsy to it. It's very enchanting. I love a good princess perfume and Tutu Extra de Parfum is the ultimate ballerina Barbie in a bottle. It's like pink tool skirts and point shoes personified. Keynotes include grapefruit, black currant, coconut, pink champagne, jasmine, rose, heliotrope, powder, raspberry, vanilla, amber, and musk. The combination is incredible. I love raspberry, coconut, vanilla, champagne, and it truly does smell like a combination of all of those like fluffy dessert ingredients, like a raspberry tart. It has that burst of bergamot right away, so it's kind of sparkling, a little bit zesty, energizing. It kind of awakes you at first. A little citrus burst, but it's not too citrusy, and then it's instantly smooth and fruity floral. If this exact shade of pastel pink could be a fragrance, it would smell exactly like this. You almost feel like you're smelling the bottle. This is definitely my style of fragrance. This was love at first sniff. Slightly rose, slightly floral, but not too much. It's slightly fruity, but not too much. A hint of powder, but not too much. It's just perfectly blended and balanced. The ideal harmony of all of those notes put together. It smells incredibly luxurious. I love wearing this fragrance. It smells even better on the skin. If you like something that is incredibly feminine, sweet but not too sweet, you have to try Tutu Extra de Parfum. Another fragrance with the same vibe, I would wear these for the same occasion, is Oriana from Parfum de Marly. It's not that they smell the same, but if you really like this fragrance, because I know this is more widely available, I think they carry this in Nordstrom, Saks, basically all of the big department stores, if you like this, I think the chances are very high that you will love Tutu as well. Oriana starts with a burst of bergamot, grapefruit, and mandarin orange. Middle notes are orange blossom, raspberry, and black currant. Base notes are whipped cream, marshmallow, musk, and ambrette. So they share some of the same notes, but I would say Oriana is less creamy vanilla. It's less musk. This is more Chantilly cream, marshmallow, the orange blossom is so nice. This smells incredible. Dessert. It reminds me so much of the berry chantilly cakes. I think Oriana is a bit sweeter than Tutu Extra as well. It's a little bit sweeter. It's still very fluffy, light, feminine, very princessy. I love the mandarin orange, the black currant, and the marshmallow. I've actually been grabbing Oriana a lot more than Delina recently. And I would say this has sort of edged its way as being my favorite Parfum de Marly fragrance. It's flirty, it could be a date night, it could be a girl's night out, it's a little bit cheeky. It's just a fun, flirty fragrance. And I'll never forget the launch because it happened right before the holidays, a couple years ago now. And I remember at the time thinking, I really like this, but it just doesn't feel appropriate to wear it right now. And I knew that as soon as spring summer came around, this was going to be the perfect fragrance. So I really enjoy wearing this in the warmer months because it has that juicy lusciousness. It's almost a mouthwatering quality that is so perfect for summer. Now, if you are somebody who prides yourself on smelling unique, you do not like fragrances that are really popular or are worn by a lot of other people, I think you will love the Harmonist Moon Glory. This has that X factor. Again, it's very bold, intense. It lasts a really long time. So Quality-wise, projection, it's incredible, but more than that, what first drew me to this fragrance was that 
I couldn't put my finger on it. It just, it defies category. It smells like sunshine, warmth, even though it's called Moon Glory. And there's another one called Sun Force. I actually think this smells like sunshine. It reminds me of tropical vacation, being on a desert island somewhere, somewhere very remote, undiscovered perhaps. It smells very exotic. Keynotes include Ylang Ylang, Hawaiian Jasmine and Lishi, Honey, Passion Flower, Orchid Cactus, Peru Balsam, Sandalwood, and Hinoki Wood. I haven't talked about this fragrance very much lately. It hasn't been the right occasion, but if I'm being very honest with you, there are a handful of fragrances in my collection that I don't like to talk about very much. Not that I'm trying to gatekeep them because this is obviously a very popular brand, a very popular fragrance. People know about it, but it's so special and it's so unique that I kind of don't want to let the cat out of the bag just yet. To me, it still feels like a special secret. It's amazing. It's a little powdery. I definitely pick up a little honey. There's a little sweetness. It's a little bit floral, but it smells otherworldly. There's nothing else I can even compare it to. It just smells incredible. And I remember when I purchased this because I'd gone to the counter and I was sniffing around trying to find something unique and I knew I really liked it, but I told myself I was going to wear it on my arm. I was going to be responsible, walk around for a little bit, and maybe come back and buy it. I didn't leave the store without this fragrance because I had to have it then and there. I couldn't wait. It is definitely powdery, so if you don't like powdery fragrances, you're not going to like this. But once it dries down, I always find them to be very elegant. I think it sort of elevates the fragrance. It makes it smell really expensive, very rich, decadent. The Lishi, the Frangipani, there are so many incredible notes. It's a little bit solar. It just, to me, smells like a tropical queen is what comes to mind. Queen of the Hawaiian Islands would wear Moon Glory, and it is so long-lasting. You do not need to spritz very much of this fragrance. When I wear this out, I sometimes forget because I'm used to, I'm, I don't know if I'm an over-sprayer, but I definitely spray my fragrance quite a few times, but I cannot spray this the same way. I, ha I spray it once or twice and I'm like, okay, stop for a second, waft it around a little bit, maybe one more spritz in the hair and then you're done. Two or three spritzes and that is it. It is intoxicating, definitely main character energy for sure. Next, I have two fragrances here from Un Nui Nomad. My original favorite was Jardin de Mispa. Love this fragrance. And then this is a new launch and a relatively new addition to my collection. They sent this to me complimentary. Sugar Leather. I didn't, I don't want to say I had low expectations, but anytime I see leather, I kind of think, eh, I'm not sure if this is going to be right for me. I've worn this so much ever since I first tried this and it is in incredible. It is a delicious anytime, any place gourmand. It smells like caramel, a little leathery, a little sugar, but mixed perfectly together. And it is long lasting. Anytime I've worn this, I smell it throughout the day. I can pick up whiffs of this fragrance on my skin. The leather is not too masculine. The sugar is not too sweet. It's not cloying. It just smells like the perfect year-round, always appropriate gourmand. If you like gourmand fragrances and you like the idea of caramel and leather, maybe you have a trendier style, you like leather jackets, you like to wear black or neutrals, you have more of a cool girl aesthetic, this would be the perfect fragrance for you. I'm definitely not that cool, that is not my style, but I still love this fragrance. It smells so nice. And it can be worn day or night. It's really versatile. It's not really a tropical summer fragrance. I wouldn't put this in the category of summertime. It's really just an it girl fragrance. Somebody who's really cool, has impeccable style. I imagine somebody with a really awesome outfit, amazing handbag, definitely a leather bag. It has a casual, chic, very effortless vibe to it that I love. And then Jardin de Mispa is more my typical style of fragrance. It's a little princessy. It has rose and vanilla, which is one of my favorite combination of notes. And it almost smells like a whimsical fairy garden. It's incredible. It has the wearability and mass appeal of a really popular designer fragrance without smelling too generic or overdone. Like if you wear this fragrance, you're still going to smell 
pretty unique. And it also helps that I've received a lot of compliments when wearing this fragrance. I've been asked a lot about this, so it always makes me feel good when I know I like a fragrance, but when other people tell me that they also love a fragrance and they want to know what I'm wearing and write the name down, you know, they really are taking it seriously, that's when you know it's a good perfume. And then last but certainly not least, The Golden Child, one of my all-time favorite fragrances. This will always be one of the best fragrances in my collection. I know it's pretty old and maybe people are kind of sick of hearing about it, but I still think it's a showstopper. This is Greenwich Village from Bond Number no. 9, New York. I think the price and exclusivity of this fragrance is the only thing that has kept it from completely popping off and just going crazy popularity-wise. I know it's very popular among fragrance reviewers, but this fragrance is, I think, over $400, and they don't really offer smaller sizes in all of them. And Bond is no longer carried in Nordstrom. I think it's only carried in select retailers. So it's not as easy to find. Other than that, if this was more widely available and the cost wasn't so ridiculous, I think this would have been the next Baccarat Rouge 540, where, where you have so many other brands launching similar or inspired by fragrances, because it's just so good. Keynotes include Cassis, Lishi, Mandarin, Peony, Water Lily, Patchouli, Jasmine Petals, Ambrox, Peach, Musk, Vanilla, Oak Moss, and Praline. It is heaven in a bottle and another one of my most complimented fragrances. Everybody always loves this whenever I wear it. It's delicious, fruity, dessert, the Praline. Oh. This would be my signature scent if it wasn't so expensive. This is my first one and only bottle and it scares me to think about having to replace it even though I have so many fragrances. It just smells so nice. This is how I want to smell. The dry down is incredible. The oak moss, the musk, the vanilla. It's creamy, dreamy. It smells like dessert. It's a little bit tropical. And I always find it very hard to describe this fragrance because there's nothing else like it. I truly have not smelled anything else that came remotely close to this. For whatever reason, it reminds me so much of summertime and I just imagine being out and about at some of the fabulous events in Miami. So this to me will always be a summer showstopper. And that completes today's list. I did not wanna oversaturate this group because I feel so strongly about each and every one of the fragrances that I talked about today. Of course, it's always hard choosing favorites. There are so many incredible fragrances for summer and it's impossible for me to smell everything. So if you know of any incredible recommendations I hope you will drop them in the comments, share with the group. No gatekeeping allowed, you have to drop a comment, we'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.